everyone and welcome back. In today's video I'm doing another digital art tutorial and I'm be going to be focusing on how I colour and shade and this is video three in the beginner digital art series and in this series I'm showing you how to create this piece here from start to finish from sketching to final touches all real-time tutorials in about 10 minute segments so that they're easy uh, to watch and digest and I'm using my Huion GT191 graphic monitor tablet. I have a full video a review view and demo of this tablet. Uh, I'll leave a link to the video in case you're interested. It's a very good introductory um, graphics monitor tablet and I really like using it. There's lots more information in that video if you're interested. Now if you haven't already gone ahead and watched part one and part two of this series, um, I do suggest you do if you're interested in following along and seeing how I did the shading and the line art. But if you're just here for the colouring, um, let's just uh, get into it then. So what I did was last week I did the line art and then Today I created a new layer, I've entitled it colour, and I've placed the layer underneath the line art layer, and that's quite important. You need to place your colour, if you're, if you're following along how I'm doing it, you need to place the colour layer underneath the line art layer. And I've also locked down all the layers that I'm not working on, um, in particular the line art layer, just so that I'm not colouring accidentally on the line art layer. And what I'm doing is I'm color blocking. So this is, I tend to do coloring in several stages. I have a, a layer for color, for the base colors, and then I have a layer for shading, and then I have extra layers on top of that for highlights um, and any textures and gradients that I apply to the piece afterwards. And when I'm working digitally, it's all done in layers. And that way, if I make a mistake, it's very easy to um, delete a layer of shading or um, to be able to Put the visibility up and down on different layers to see how things look and that way you can um, see if you like what you how it's going or if you liked it how it was before so i started with the skin and i just did a a, a base skin tone color and then i'm up in the hat now and i've picked this really nice um bright blue for the for her hat color and i'm just colouring in and because the colour layer is underneath the line art layer I can go right up against the lines and I can colour within the lines much easier like this. Now you can see up in the hat there I'm, the blue is actually going over the lines and it's going into the leaves and into the flowers. Now that's not a problem because I'm going to be colouring the leaves and the flowers with other colours and those colours will um, di uh, will cover up the blue. So when you're doing um, big, I suggest you do any big areas first, so like I'm doing the skin and the hat first and then I'm going to go in and do all the flowers and the leaves afterwards so that I can uh, put my brush size down and I, I like to do that because I like to work in a big brush size first and get the big areas done and then put my brush size down to be able to get into all those little uh, nooks and crannies. Now there are probably other ways that you can colour in Photoshop. I know there are loads of different ways that you can do it. This is just the way that I like doing it. I like to approach digital art in a very similar way that I do traditional art. So I'm colouring this in the exact same way I would colour a marker piece or a coloured pencil piece. That's easiest for me because I'm coming, uh, I'm coming to digital art from a background of traditional art. If you um, if you may be coming from it from a different angle and so you may want to go ahead and uh, find a different way of colouring and, and, and often you start out doing one thing and then as you learn more tips and tricks about using the programme you find your own shortcuts and you find your own best practices so it's really just a question of experimentation and um, so I, I did that up, up in the hat and now I'm just adding I've decided to give her this nice sort of light pink hair just for something different and I'm adding um, the base coat to the hair. Now one thing um, I will say, now this video is in real time, but the base colouring took me 58 minutes to complete. And I know the exact time because I can see the recording, I recorded everything. So um, just to let you know, this is not, it, it is quite time consuming doing this, but I really like the look of it. And I can have total control on where Color, on, on what colours what. So um, that's how I did the base layer and now I'm going to be doing the shading. So I've added another layer called shading and I've put it on top of all the other, on top of the colour layer but still under the line art layer. The line art layer needs to be on top for the colouring process. So I've taken 
my brush and now, now this is just using the regular brush and I've put the opacity down to 44% and I've um, chosen a darker colour. Now actually I prefer using the airbrush for colouring because it gives me a result that looks very much like my Copic marker drawings and I really love the textured look that the airbrush gives me. I've swapped to the airbrush and I'm using the airbrush 25 brush and th these are default brushes that come with Photoshop CS6 which is what I'm using. These are, these are not special brushes and the nice thing about using the airbrush with the opacity down is that you can see I can layer up the layers. Now one thing to be aware of, and this is if you're using a, a pen that has pressure sensitivity, it will affect how much opacity goes down on the um, artwork. So if I press very hard with my pen I get a darker colour, if I press lighter with my pen I get a lighter colour. And now you can adjust this in your Photoshop settings, um, in the brush settings you can adjust whether or not this happens. I actually quite like, I like having that ability to just with my um, just by pressing to be able to get the different uh, colour variations, the darker and the lighter, but I just, I tend to go in light and then I darken up the areas and then I go in and I, uh, and because the opacity down is, the opacity is put down to 44%, now 44 is, you don't have to have it at 44, I just dragged the little um, opacity uh, dial down and that's where it landed, but it can be, you've got to have it down at least half halfway for this sort of technique and that way you can do the shading and you can layer and layer and layer without swapping colours because you're, you're just making your, the first colour darker and if you've ever used markers or coloured pencils it's a very similar uh, technique so as you can see I'm just going for darker colours the, I, I, I use the eyedropper tool to select my base coat and then I just use the colour se selection to choose a darker shade and then I go in very lightly with my uh, pen and I start shading underneath. Now with the digital art, with the shading that I'm doing here, the more layers the better normally. The more layers you have, the more blended it looks. Just like as I said with coloured pencils or markers, the more layers, the more blended um, and the more depth and dimension you can get. Now um, because I don't want this video to be really really long and as I said it took me almost an hour to do the first part and the shading process took me about 40 minutes so it's an hour and 40 minutes to do the whole colouring and shading on this I'm only doing um, quite minimal shading because I wanted to show you guys what you could achieve um, but I but with, but without making the video really really long so uh, bear in mind that you can you can take it even further than how I've, I'm taking it here so I'm putting some sh shadow under her chin and around the sides of her neck and I'm going down lightly first, then I'm pressing much darker in the darkest places and then I'm pressing lightly again going outwards towards the middle so that I can kind of blend out that dark colour into the light colour. And I found that that worked really well and I did a little bit of extra shading um, on the cheekbones and by the sides of her nose. And then I went in and added a little bit of pink blush and then I, because with, with the face I went in with a darker colour to do the, a darker brown to do the shadows. And the other thing to remember is when you're picking colours and when you have the opacity down 40% or the opacity down by half, the colours will be obviously a lot lighter. And so you want to pick darker colours than you think you need. So if I was using this brown colour and you can see the original brown colour down in the um, left hand side, down on the little colour boxes. That colour would be far too dark if I just put that directly onto her face with the um, opacity level up at normal. So when you're picking colours you need to go a lot darker than you think because um, obviously the opacity is going to be down by half. And then um, now I'm up in the hat area and I'm just doing quite simple shading on the flowers. Now it may look simple at this um, when I'm zoomed in like this but when I zoom out you'll be able to see that it does make a difference. And the other good thing is that I'm working on a separate layer and I always put my shading on a different layer so that if I get to the end where I'm like I really don't like this I think I've overcome complicated it because a lot of time simplicity, just simple shading, colour block shading can look really nice and I really like that look. So um, if you have your shading on a separate layer you can easily um, 
change it, delete it, hide it if you don't want it. Um, and then I did shading underneath the hat. And again, I'm just doing that same sort of technique. And you can see as I layer one brush stroke over the other, you get a really nice painterly effect and you can blend it out. And I'm just, I'm, I'm always picking the eyedropper and I'm always using the same color. And as you can see, the other thing that I'm doing is I'm zoomed in a lot. I find that that's really helpful. Um, this canvas that I'm working on um, is an A3 size canvas, so it's pretty big. And I like to be zoomed in quite a lot in order to uh, see where I'm shading. Now for the hair, I just did some slightly darker hair strokes in the hair just to give it a little bit more dimension. And one of the other things that I like to do is that I like to zoom in and out. So I'll shade one area, zoom out, see how it looks at, a, at, at an angle. Because sometimes when you're really zoomed in, it can be hard to get a really accurate look of how this looks against all the other areas. And so I tend to start out lighter with the shading and then I can go ahead and I can darken up any areas that I think need darkening afterwards. Because you, you can go in and... Um, shade some areas and then zoom out and then you might think oh that area needs to be a bit darker so it's better to go lighter with your shading to start with and then you can always go ahead afterwards and add more shading in um, to balance out the dark the dark areas so um, that's about it for me today as I said earlier there are so many ways that you can color digitally this is a good way I think if you're a beginner to get started and this is how I do it because I like to have um, I like to I like to paint with the brush I really like painting with the with the brush I like doing it traditionally and I like doing it digitally. I'm sure there are quicker ways of doing it, but I think if you're just getting started, then this is a good way to go. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you leave a comment down below if you have any questions and stay tuned for next week's colouring tutorial. It will be the last video and we'll be doing highlights, gradients and adding texture to the piece.